So let's consider a topic called boundary scan technique and a related topic called JTAG. So JTAG stands for Joint Test Action Group and JTAG is a, uh, a standard, an IEEE standard, and it is used to allow designers to use the boundary scan technique. So JTAG is just a way to standardize how the boundary scan technique is used. So what is the boundary scan technique? It's actually a technique that allows us to uh, probe the pin values of chips installed on PCBs without having to use physical probes. When we start to look at it in detail, we will find that it is analogous to a topic or a subject that we talked about in detail within uh, microchips, within design for testability in microchips. But let's just dive into it. So this is the boundary of a chip as it is installed on a PCB. So as you can see, this is the boundary. And uh, these are the pins, basically, that will be soldered to the copper tracks on the PCB. This is within the package, the IC package, and this is the die itself. Uh, and this is probably the boundary of the die. So this is the core of the die, which contains the logic of the die, and this is the boundary of the die itself. These are registers, so they are contained within the die, and they are uh, normal digital registers, but they, are, uh, they serve a special purpose. They are I.O. registers. So they uh, register the value of the input and the output pins. So they are just used to register the values of the pins before they are presented to the die or before they are presented to the PCB. So this would be the normal situation if we didn't have boundary scan technique enabled. Uh, these uh, registers would allow communication in parallel so that all inputs are sampled in parallel and all outputs are sampled in parallel. The boundary scan technique requires us to uh, modify every input and output register in the chip into boundary scan registers. And this is where you start to detect the similarity to the scan technique. And this is in fact um, a, a, a correct observation. The boundary scan technique is highly related to the scan technique. It is just a scaling up of the scan technique from the chip level to the uh, to the uh, PCB level, and while most uh, you know while most embedded systems designers, for example, will not have to deal with scan techniques, they will have to understand the boundary scan technique. But the two are not mutually exclusive. So you could have scan technique enabled on a chip and boundary scan technique enabled on the PCB, and the two actually aid each other. We'll see how when we uh, when we finish explaining what the boundary uh, scan technique is. So the first step is to modify every register into a boundary scan register. And in that case, uh, all of the registers will have an additional multiplexer. This multiplexer will either feed the, uh, will feed the D input of the register, either the norm normal input that we normally observe, or a test input, which we call the test, test data input. And so if you look at the first pin here, it's an output pin. It normally accepts its input, D, from the die core because it is an output pin. So this would, of course, be one of the inputs to the multiplexer, the additional multiplexer here. On the other hand, there is another input to the multiplexer, which in this case is an additional pin to the uh, chip. And this pin is called TDI. Notice that this is a different TDI from the test data input that we talked about in the, in the scan technique. So this is an independent TDI. The next pin is an input pin, which would normally accept an input to the register from the input pin. So this is the case here for one of the inputs of the multiplexer, whereas the other input would be the output of the register that preceded it. And we will do the same for any output pin, and we will do the same for all of the output, uh, for all of the input pins. So all registers are replaced by scan registers, which have an additional multiplexer. This multiplexer will always accept as one of the inputs, the normal input that would have been accepted in case we are operating normally, but the other input would be the output of the preceding register. So what does this do? It allows us 
to work in one of two uh, modes, you can say, and the mode will basically set the select line of the multiplexers. So when we are in normal mode, uh, everything will be fed in parallel. And so we'll go back to this situation again, and this would be a normal operation of the chip. If we are on test, in test mode, on the other hand, then we will always pick as an input to the register the output of the preceding register. And so the first register will accept TDI, which comes from the outside. The second register will accept the output of the first register. The third register will accept the output of the second register. The fourth register will accept the output of the third register. And the fifth register will accept the output of the fourth register. Now, the final register will provide as an output, will provide its output to a pin called TDO, test data output, which again is independent from the test data output pin for the scan technique. There's of course a third pin that we are not showing here, which is a test pin, which will basically feed all the select lines of all the multiplexers simultaneously to allow us to switch between normal mode and test mode. So, in short, these three additional pins and the modification of I.O. registers into I.O. scan registers allows us to either function normally or to turn the boundary of the, of the, of the chip, all the input and output registers of the chip, into one single shift register. So, why is this useful? This becomes clear when we look at a whole setup with multiple chips. So this is a PCB, for example, which has four microchips uh, installed on top, and they're connected using uh, copper tracks. Now, just imagine for a second that these copper tracks are not single bit tracks, they're multiple bit tracks, but I'm not drawing them just uh, for simplicity. What's gonna happen here is that each of these chips is going to be boundary, uh, boundary scan uh, compatible, which means that the input and output registers have these boundary scan uh, modifications. Also, each of them is going to have a TDI and a TDO and a test pin. So it has a TDI, TDO, and test pin. There's also going to be a TDI jack uh, and a TDO jack and a test jack on the PCB itself. So you have two input pins or jacks or bits on the PCB, TDI and TD uh, and test, and one output, which is TDO. Now, when you're creating the copper tracks on the PCB, you create two sets of tracks. There are the tracks that com connect the, uh, the chips to each other so that they function properly and form a system with each other. But there's an independent set of tracks that form a boundary around all of these chips. Again, if you uh, visited the video on scan technique, you will find that this is very similar to what's happening in the scan technique. So using a dotted blue line, I'm going to draw this independent copper track. Um, uh, and it begins at the TDI jack. So it basically begins at the input of the PCB. And it's going to be drawn independently from the other copper tracks because it's only used in, the, uh, in scan mode. And notice that this is a single bit line. So this is a single bit copper track. So it's not as intrusive as you might think. And what it's going to do is that it's going to go to the first chip and it's going to visit the TDI jack of that first, the TDI pin of that first chip. And then it's going to exit through the TDO pin of that first chip. And then it's going to go to the next chip, visit its TDI pin, and start again at its TDO pin. Go to the next pin, next chip, visit its TDI, come out of its TDO, and do the same for the last chip. And when it finishes, it has to exit through the TDO jack of the PCB. And of course, it has to do this without ha creating any crossovers like I did here, right? So it has to be drawn intelligently using the same CAT tool that created the tracks for the normal operation of the PCB, if you will. Now, the test pin is also distributed to all of the test pins of all of the chips. So this feeds all of the test pins of all of the chips so that all of the chips are either in normal mode or in test mode simultaneously. Now, when they are in normal mode, when the test pin is zero, 
this whole blue dotted line is meaningless because uh, the TDI and TDO pins of the chips are meaningless. The chips are operating in parallel mode and their input and output registers are in parallel mode. But when the test pin is equal to one, then all of these chips are gonna operate in test mode. And this basically, if you go back and look at what's happening here, this basically is gonna bypass the die core. And it's gonna just create a shift register from TDI to TDO. And so what's gonna happen here is that this chip, chip number three, is gonna create a shift register around its boundary, which is why it's called the boundary scan technique. And then chip one is gonna create also a boundary scan and chip two and chip four. And so now you have a complete loop from TDI all the way out to TDO. And what does this loop contain? It contains a very long shift register, which is formed of all the pins, whether they are input or output or IO or whatever, of all the chips. And this path is created independently using an independent copper track on the PCB. So why is this useful? It is useful because when you create a PCB containing multiple chips, uh, and especially if you have BGA chips or PGA chips, you don't have access to the pins. You don't have mechanical access to the pins. You cannot probe them mechanically. And so this allows you to probe the values of the pins because they are now, they could be part of, of a shift register. Not only that, but you can also force the values of the pins to a specific value. So let's imagine that you have a chip like chip 4, for example, and you want to apply a test to chip 4. If you want to apply the test to chip 4 specifically, what you have to do is you have to force the input pins of chip 4 to a specific test vector value, which you would normally not be able to do. But using the boundary scan technique, you can do that by setting the uh, test mode to 1 and then shifting in the input until they are settled in the input pin registers of, uh, of chip 4. And then you return to test mode uh, equals 0. You apply enough clock cycle so that you have outputs from chip 4. And then you can shift out the values from the output registers of, chi uh, of chip 4. This is, again, very similar to the scan technique. And it can be combined with the scan technique because you can apply inputs to uh, chip 4, including the scan technique inputs of chip 4. So it can be, you can have like uh, nested levels of scanning where you scan the boundary of the PCB and you also scan within a specific module in the chip. But the second, the second thing that the boundary scan technique can be used for, which is uh, more common, is it can be used to uh, probe and ensure the uh, integrity of the assembly so that uh, you can ensure, for example, that the pins are actually connected to the copper tracks, that, um, that if you have a problem, if the setup is not working properly, you can start probing. Maybe uh, one of the connections was shorted while it was created, one of them was open, or maybe one of the copper tracks on the PCB is not created properly and it's creating a short or an open. So it's also a way to test the PCB itself and the connection of the, of the chips to the PCB. Uh, so how can this be done? You can force the output pins of a certain chip to a certain value, and then you can check that you receive this value properly at the other chips. Uh, how so? For example, you can, you can set the output pin, this output pin of chip 4, for example, to a specific value. If you set this output pin of chip 4 to a specific value, and then you observe that you receive the value correctly at chip 2, then you can state with uh, certainty that this piece of copper track between these two chips is working fine and that these pins that are used to connect these two chips together are working fine. If you detect a problem, then you can isolate the, the problem to either these pins or to this copper track. The specific way in which you perform the test, meaning how the uh, uh, test vectors are shifted in through TDI and TDO is specified by the JTAG um, standard. 